Hallelujah. Welcome to Patricia of living a life of victory. I am an overcomer. You are an overcomer. Blessed be the Lord. Psalm 144 verse 1. Blessed be the Lord, my strength, which teacheth my hands to war and my fingers to fight. May that Lord, that God that has given me the opportunity to use my hands. When you go out to do whatever you do as a business or as a job, you use your hands. You use your fingers to write. God that has taught me, God that has taught me how to use my fingers to write, how to use my hand to write, to be able to make a living, to be able to drive hunger out of my life and my family. I praise him. May he alone be blessed. You will have a reason to bless the Lord. Go and check those who have lost their hands in accident. Check them out and you know what God has done for you. Your two full hands are there. Ten fingers complete are there. These people, their hands are updated. No hand, no finger, not even one. Not even two. Eh? All fingers gone, ten gone, two hands gone. Yet they still praise God. But you cannot praise God. You use those hands to perpetuate evil in your environment. You use those hands to smoke weed and say you are a big boy. You are a, a, I mean, you use those hands to invite evil against your enemies. You use those hands to attack people and kill them. You use those hands that God has given to you to kidnap people. You use them to carry guns to shoot people dead. Oh, brother, sister, something is not right with you. You need to be born again. Let me just be hard today on you. You are an agent of darkness. You are. Whether you accept it or not, and I know you know. I know that you know that you are an agent of darkness. I know. They have given you a name which God did not give you, and you are operating in that name. Your name has become Lucifer. You answer another name, the Viking, the vampire. That is your name. Which God has not given to you. And you operate as a vampire. Decimate people. Terminate people's lives. Destroy people. You are nothing but an agent of darkness. In fact, your root is the root of darkness. Root of Satan. And the earlier you repent, the better. Because you will soon meet your Waterloo. Those that, in, that, are in, that initiated you into all these things, they are coming after you. The Lord will raise them against you to destroy you. Because he refused to hear. And then the Lord will raise Satan himself to stand by those who are initiating people into cultism. The Lord will raise Satan against them to demolish them and to destroy them. You want to kill so that you can get 10 veggies as well. Are you normal? What is it that you are looking for? Except a man be born again, you can't get those things. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and this righteousness. Then you will begin to get these things. They are freely given. Very, very free. Very, very, very free. Very, very, very free. Those things that you are running after, you want to do this, you want to do that, blah, blah, they are there with you. They are there with you. Why don't you, I mean, why, why don't you want to be born again? Very simple something. Accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. And it's done. 
just accept with your heart. Profess with your mouth that Jesus is the Son of God. And it is all over. Those things that you are looking for will be done. John chapter 16 verse 33. These things I have spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheers. I have overcome the world for you. These things that we are saying, I'm telling you today, is that you have peace in this world. Peace in God. You have peace, your neighbors will have peace, the world will be at peace with itself. That is the purpose of these things we are talking about. Repent and be transformed. Not live repentance. You are in the church. You are still there doing things that are so despicable. You are in the church because you want to, there is something that you want to grab. You, you go there to scam not only the people of God, but you also want to scam God. You are not genuinely there as a repented child of God. Even ministers, those of us that are pastors, some of us are just there because of what we want to get. What is it that we want to get? Some of us are looking for suits to wear. I'm wearing 25,000 pounds worth of suit. For what? Why? No, why? Wrist watch. Uh, uh, what, what do you call it? This watch of $150,000 or £150,000, you want to wear it as a pastor. Haba. And you are telling me you are born again. And then, and then you are telling others to be born again. And that is why others are not responding to, your, to what you are saying. Because they want to be like you. They want to wear shoes. What of what of uh, uh, one hundred and fifty thousand pounds? They want to wear tie. That when they see it, ah, they say this one is a bunto. This one is one of the ah, one of the rich richest uh, uh, pastors born again. Apostle Paul says, if your hope is based in all these things, you are nothing but a miserable fellow. Miserable. If this is why you, you became a pastor, why you became born again, why you are in the church, because you want to you want to meet a businessman who introduce you to some kinds of businesses so that you will be as rich as them. Tomorrow you come with Lamborghini, come with a Formatic, come with all kinds of cars to intimidate others. If that is your <laughs> look, if that is your mission in the church, <laughs> you are nothing but a miserable fellow. Because those things won't last long. They won't last. Even those ones that you see that are living flamboyantly in those things, using it to brag. I am the president and founder of, uh, I am the general of ACF. Uh, my church is uh, 100,000 members. My de -de -de -de. Your church, eh? And you are not born again. Those 100,000 members are not born again. Then you need to go back to God and say, God, where have I gone wrong? Members of my church, members of that your church that you claim to be your church, not the church of Christ. There are 419ers. Some members of God, what am I going to do? Still, when they bring uh, this thing, Proceed from 419, from robbery, from kidnapping. You collect it. They bring it to the church. Build uh, edifices for you. Yeah, you can use it because you can use it to propagate the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes. Many are called, but few are chosen. Yes. But you yourself, the problem is that if you are born again, you will be able, they will be able to learn from you. The Spirit of God will be able to work with you to transform these people's lives. But the foundation where you are standing 
is not even a born again foundation. It's not born again foundation. You just want to be in charge of men. You just want to own a platform through which you can you can speak your motivational uh, 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 grammars, your motivational uh, uh, gimmicks. Going there to rap, rapping, bringing comedians as to come and entertain. Eh? When you go to church, when you go to service, it's a it's, it's a serious business. Business to transform men and women into becoming better vessels for God. Are you hearing me? Not a, not a place of comedy. It's not. We've converted the church as a place of comedy. It's not right, brother. Sister, it's not right. It can be, continue to be a place of comedy. You are a comedian, and that's why you are bringing comedians instead of bringing pastors to come and speak to the people of God. Then you are using the time to bring comedians to come and entertain them. Then why they are coming to church? They are coming to laugh. In fact, it's a time, it's a moment of sober reflection. How to come out of the bondage. The Egypt where you found yourself. Even if you think you are out, it's a time to pray so that he that stands will stand. That is what the word of God says. This is the only way to live a victorious life. This is the only way to live a victorious life. Eh? After singing in, in the club, the person will still come and sing in the, in, the, in the house of God, transmitting the same spirit that he used in the club. Transmitting it in the church. And people are going down instead of coming up spiritually. And they will camouflage as if they are born again. They will come fly and they will even grab pastors and pastors will be so much glued to what they are singing. Huh? Be born again. Born again. When you are born again, all things must pass away. All friends, that have no meaning to your life, that don't add anything positive to your life, you let them go. You let them go. These things I, I have spoken unto you is that in me you might have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheers, I have overcome the world. Verse 30. Let me go to verse 30. Which is the problem that everybody is saying. Now, I wish sure that thou knowest all things, and needest not that any man should ask thee. By this will believe that thou comest forth from God. That's still that. People, you can ask God, are you really, I, I mean, are you, or ask God questions about where you are. Ask God, are you really in this place? Are you really in this church that I attend? Why is it that my life has not changed? Why is it that my life has not changed? Not changed in terms of material things. Yes, spiritually, you are still the same or worse. Yeah? Now, are we sure that we know all things? That this place where we are, <laughs> that we are in the right place? And do we need that any man should ask us? By this we believe that thou comest forth from God. They were asking Jesus. How I, I don't know how I'm going to transport this, but let me see if I can. Now we know that you know everything. They, they were talking to you. It all comes together in you. You won't have to put up with our questions anymore. We are convinced you came from God. They were able to be convinced that Jesus is from God. We don't need to ask more questions, further questions, Jesus. To know that we are from God. They have concluded 
that this Jesus is from God. That this Jesus is from who? Is from God. This Jesus is from God. Praise the Lord. Are you convinced that this voice you are hearing, this message is from God? Be convinced. Ask God, is this message from you? This pastor that is talking, is this pastor saying the right thing? Ask God, you have the right. They ask questions until they we are convinced that Jesus came from God. Until they were convinced. They said they don't have any other question to ask. Eh? Isaiah 41. And I want to read from verse 9 so fast before I close. Thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called thee from the chief men thereof, and said unto thee, Thou art my servant, I have chosen thee, and not cast thee away. This is God. He has chosen you. By asking to be born again, He has chosen you. By you hearing this message, it means that Jesus has chosen you. Jesus has chosen you. That is why you are able to hear this message. God has chosen you. That is why you are able to hear this message. For this purpose, I brought you out from the ends of this earth. Any place you enter and they don't talk about born again, run away from there. And I called thee from the chief men thereof, the people who call themselves chief, chief of witches and wizards. He said, because thou art my servant and I have chosen thee. And I will not cast you away. This is God. God will not cast us away. This is the consolation that we have in Christ Jesus. Fear thou not, verse 10, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee in this race, in this battle. I will give you strength, you will overcome. I have made you an overcomer right from the beginning. Called you my servant, chosen thee, and not cast you away. Yeah, I will help thee. Yeah, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Not even your own righteousness. The right righteousness of God. The right hand of his own righteousness. That is what God is going to use to hold you. Because if it is by our own righteousness, our righteousness cannot take us anywhere. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed, because from today you have become an overcomer. And confounded, they shall be ashamed, and they shall be confounded. They shall be as nothing from today. And they that strive with thee shall perish. If I were here, I would type a man, and shout a man, and jump a man. Praise the Lord. Thou shalt seek them and shall not find them. Even them that contended with thee, they that war against thee shall be as nothing from today. And I say amen on your behalf. And as a thing of not, nothing. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand in his own righteousness, of course, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. What else do you want? What else do you want? God has been there for us. And God is ready to take us to our expectation, to our destination. Fear not, in verse 14 of Isaiah 41. Fear not, thou warm Jacob, and you men of Israel, I will help thee, say the Lord. And thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, why are you bothered? In verse 15, he said, Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument. Having teeth. Having what? Teeth. Thou shalt thresh the mountains. Bring down mountains. Level mountains. As I can see, mountains crumbling now in my life. 
As I can see, Mount is crumbling now in my family. As I can see, Mount is crumbling now in your own family. Crumbling in your own life. And beat those mountains to be small. When you appear, they will bow. And shall make the hills as chaff. So that the east wind can take them away. Blow them away. Thou shalt fan them away. Thou shalt blow them away. And the wind shall carry them away. And the wild wind shall scatter them. And thou shalt rejoice in the Lord. And shall glory in the Holy One of Israel. What else are we looking for? That will make us not to be born again. You want to still cleave to that your religion? Remember. That. Without Christ, no man goes anything through religion. Even Christians who are playing religion, you can't go anywhere when you are not following Christ who came to salvage this world. When the poor and the needy seek water and there is none, Christ will provide them for us. And their tongue faileth for test. I, the Lord, will hear them. And I, the Lord God of Israel, will not forsake them. What else are we looking for? I will open rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of the valley. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. This is what God is saying concerning somebody under the sound of my voice this morning. I will plant in the wilderness the cedar, the shita tree, and the mitru, and the oil tree, I will set in the desert the fig tree and the pine and the box tree together. Everything that you are looking for, you will find it in Christ. There's nothing he cannot do. Embrace Jesus today. That they may know, that they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord has done this. And the Holy One of Israel has created it. This is the purpose why God wants to bless you. That those your adversaries will know. They will gather together, consider together. They will appreciate that it is the hand of God that has done this for you. This week, this week, <laughs> eh, this week will not pass you by. You will see that you are an overcomer. God will give you an evidence that you are an overcomer. Even as I speak to you today, I declare from henceforth, that you are an overcomer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Even as you share this message, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless your going out, bless your coming in, bless everything that concerns you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I bless your Monday. I bless your Tuesday. I bless your Wednesday. I bless your Thursday. I bless your Friday. I bless your Saturday. And I bless your Sunday. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus Christ's mighty name I pray. Amen. God bless you. And bless you real good. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. See you.